and oh shit boom i forgot to put the thumbnail up i i keep making the same mistake all right boom here we are guys thank you so much for joining another episode of harmonious hour episode two with a very very special guest we have professional skateboarder nick tucker in here oh what the, what the f wait, what, what is that dude wait wait hold on what, why is that uh oh it's because i have that oh, that video up skateboarder. what the fuck wait hold on oh, one sec oh it's it's coming from here oh yes 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 sorry you know, it's it's a growing process here. You know, we're still learning things every day. We're Technology, getting better. Bro, it's always advancing, man. Oh, yeah. Here, let me put the mic right for your face. You can adjust the Technology's shit. always advancing, always, you know, progressing. There's so, so many variables, we bro. Always, we're always trying to catch up and keep up. And no, for real, dude. And it's just like... Bear with us. <laughs> exactly, bro. It's just like... <laughs> You, you like you, you see one thing going wrong and uh, like with the computer and shit mm -hmm. it's like it could be so many things you know I mean it could be a oh. wire a program a this a that and you're just like it gets so stressful sometimes trying bro, to figure pro, it out bro i've seen you making oh. building computers and shit if, <laughs> if one thing goes wrong for me i'm like outdated as hell so i'm like uh oh like oh really <laughs> dude i'm scrambling for a long time I, I i hated computers like i always like uh, i had homies who were like you know they played computer games and shit and mm -hmm. i always told myself like that shit's too complicated. Like, I can't ever figure that out or whatever. And then I had a homie, um, like, just teach me about it. And it's, it's actually, like, pretty simple. And, like, once you kind of, like, learn about, you know, the, the parts or whatever. But it's, like, really not too hard. After I just you. got mad ADHD. Like, really? I can't follow Ikea instructions, bro. No, like, really? Just get to the point. Let me just, like, put a few screws in and make that shit and it'll be good. But you got to follow all these little things. And I've just never been good at that. You, you, would, you would say, like, you're impatient steps. a little bit? Yeah, I just, yeah. You can be patient, yeah. Well, um, all right. Uh, number one, I want to uh, introduce who we have here today. We have Nick Tucker, professional skateboarder from uh, San Diego, right? San Diego. San Diego, man. and then now you live in uh, Los Angeles. I lived in LA, yeah, for just amount the same amount of time. Um, I've lived in San Diego. Oh, really? So how how about how long is that? So it's like a split. So like I've lived in San Diego. I lived in San Diego till I was seventeen and a half, and I moved to LA then, and now you know, uh, I'm thirty one. So Years have gone by. I've lived in L.A. Almost, okay. I would say maybe more, maybe longer than I've lived in San Diego now. Oh, wow. So Wait, it's kind of a trip. So you're 31. I'm glad. I'll, that was going to be one of my one of my questions because I was like, you know, I was trying to do like some research, trying to get some good questions to ask you. Yeah. And one of the things I saw was uh, I saw an article saying you're 37. And I was like, Nick Tucker's not 37. I was, I was like, if he is, I was like, you look so good for 20, for 37. Cheers. I was like, no way, man. But you're 31. Yeah, 31. Okay, okay, yep, cool. Yep. All right. 37, well, holy <laughs> shit. But then also when I saw 37, it almost kind of made sense to me because I'm 28 right now. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was like 15, 16, like, you know, skating every day and like super deep into skate culture. I already like feel like I was already hearing your name like all the time. Like I remember seeing that video of you uh, like old uh, videos of you on YouTube a long time ago too. It's like I remember you were always, uh, always like in already the, the 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 hemisphere or the atmosphere of skateboarding. You know, for me, from what I knew about. You know what I mean? So that's what I was thinking. Like, if I knew about him when I was like 15, <laughs> 16, he ha he has to be a little bit older, right? Yeah, no, um, yeah, I've been around for a while. Been doing a lot of content. Uh, you know, been at the forefront of a lot of companies and brands. Uh, for real, and dude. Started my own brand and. Um, a lot of you know we did a day in the life back in the day when i was real young um so we've been just on it since i was young bro like since i lived in san diego and then it just kind of progressed and Jeez. i made my way out here and then like got more in the business of skating and it just blossomed and yeah i'm in a place where i, I can just kind of move and operate and i know a ton of people i have a lot of connections so it's a beautiful thing now you know? dude i have to say that like you live my my dream life it's like when i was a kid all i wanted to do is like skate all day every day you know what i mean and then like you, the older you get then you realize like oh, i gotta pay bills and i have to get this job and i'm here fucking eight hours a day now and like you realize like oh, it's draining my time from skating and i have to work this job and like you kind of like it, it makes you want to like uh, want that life even more you know when i was like 18 19 i was like bro i just want to skate all day every day and like not worry about this bullshit and like yeah. to see you and like you know other people who like make this your whole life i'm like man that would be so sick just to be able to it's just blessing, do the thing bro. that you just enjoy so much you know what i mean that's how you also make a living it's a blessing bro but like you know it's kind of like like streaming like you started out you know early on and like it just turned into what it is you mm -hmm. put in that work and and that's what what happens you know i uh, I, I saw or i heard in one of your interviews you said that like um you were really young and uh you were like already showing some talent and 
um, either a company or some older skaters kind of like took you under their wing to kind of like either, you know, flow you and, uh, uh, you know, make you get better or like kind of help you get better or whatever? Oh, absolutely. I had so many mentors and I still do. But like when I was younger, starting out, I had a lot of people that just really supported and I guess saw the vision. How um, old were you? When I started skating? No, well, when, uh, when those mentors came into your life. Dude, I was like 14, Damn. 15. Yeah. And at that point, how long were you skating? Since I had been 11. Really? Yes. Yeah, so, so you already like made a good amount of progress? Like five, six years. Damn. I guess. Okay. And then, like my first uh, shop sponsor was Street Machine in San Diego. So that's how um, I met like a lot of my friends now from San Diego. Um, and then from there, like you know, I was on a brand and mm -hmm. we traveled the world. So I got that experience yeah. and got to understand the skate life. And then, you know, those are like my big bros. So they taught me along the way mentor me and then I kind of just took the reins and like grew up a little bit and like kind of just molded myself into yeah exactly you know, what, f learning c applying what they taught me and things but also like what mm. I'm who I am too. yeah so then I came to myself and, and they weren't like really just teaching you just like here's how you you know backside flip switch five oh they're probably teaching you like business side of things like here's how you you know handle this type of situation or whatever it is or Dude. you know like the more mystical stuff that a lot of people don't know about you know so so I, I'm like, a, I guess I was shaped into like an old soul, I guess you want to say, you know, like, um, cause all of my homies, all my friends were older. They're all grown up. Like, I feel like it's common skateboarding. Like, same thing in here. Oh, when I was, when I was 15, 16, all my homies were like 18, 20, yeah. you know what I mean? It was like that just, I feel like it's super common. But then you learn from them. That's the thing, the beautiful thing about skateboarding is like, it doesn't discriminate. It's all walks of life, any mm -hmm. ages, whatever it can be. And we all connect, you know what I mean? Based off skateboarding, based off this piece of wood. So uh, yeah, it's a beautiful thing, bro. No, 100%. I wanted to ask you, like, for for me with this, like, only the past four or five months I've been doing the, like, the streaming and the YouTube thing full time. Mm -hmm. And I'm, um, like, kind of realizing how to, like, uh, schedule my, my week. You know what I mean? Like, where I'm thinking Monday through Friday is when I go hard streaming. And then Saturdays I keep it to hang out with me and my girlfriend because she works too. And, yeah, like, we don't have time to hang out. Yeah, exactly. And I'm thinking, like, you as a skateboarder, do you, do you do that too? Where you're like, I'm not skating this day or I don't skate those days because I like to chill, you know? Um, I do that more so though because my body, I need to recover and, mm. and and maintain. You know what I mean? Like if I just keep going hard and hard, like like my body won't stand, and I, I will definitely have to take a day or two really? off. Yeah, because the legs will get sore or whatever. You know, say you're out in the streets trying to trick, whatever it may be. Um, so it isn't so much of me like being like, oh, I need to stop because just I need to to chill it's mm -hmm. more like my body's like hey bro mm. chill out yeah and so but then uh, that chill time allows me to focus on the business and okay okay and that's good social media and all yeah other back end stuff. it's not like you're not you're just chilling doing nothing it's yeah. like you're, you're focusing focusing always, on other things always working okay <laughs> yeah no, exactly damn dude um it wait so it don't look <coughs> like work but yeah how often do you like feel like you have to take those breaks like how often do you feel like damn man like this shit's really fucking up my body you know what i mean um i try to go like I don't know. A couple of days out of the week, I'll take a break. Oh, know, really? Just to recoup. Yeah. Okay, okay. But well, it's mostly, yeah, throughout the week, we're just, just getting it, man. Do you have, like, a, a routine? Like, do you just, like, you know, like, wake up in the morning, just, like, go skate every day? Or do you, like, uh, you know, have, like, a morning routine? You Like, do you exercise or yeah. stretch and shit? A you lot know? of maintenance right now, especially because I have an injury. So I'm really trying to just rehab back into where I was, mm. if not better. Um, but mostly, yeah, I wake up, you know, do it normal people shit, just like brush my teeth, shower, whatever. Yeah. And then like I'll jump in like, uh, or I'll ice my legs, and then I'll jump in like these compression pants. I don't know if you've seen. Them. I seen you post on Instagram yeah, and, and shit like that. What they do is they compress and decompress, and that brings in healthy oxygen flow. Oh, interesting. And blood flow. Uh, okay. Healthy blood flow and oxygen into your muscles. So that wow. basically is like a massage before i go skate you know mm. what i'm saying i noticed that about uh pro skateboarders too is you guys are super educated on like body recovery well, like with me if i felt something sore the most i would know to do is like throw some ice on it you yeah. know what i mean but like i've seen like your videos and um uh leticia buffoni like i've seen her recovery videos i'm yeah. just like dude like they look like they're in some dragon ball z <laughs> fucking you know water chamber fucking <laughs> fixing up i'm like how do they like what is this machine you know what about I mean? the cryo chamber <laughs> The thing that freezes your whole damn body and your head sticks out. That shit helps too? It's good for you. Yeah, Bruh. yeah. It's the uh, same thing. That's it helps fucking with crazy. with muscle um, regeneration and oxygen flow. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, I don't think I saw you talk about how how did you get injured recently? Um, skating. Well, it's funny. I, I was skating and I got injured and then I started to get better. 
and then I skated too early, and that's when I kind of messed my knee up. Uh. So now I'm like, basically, not back to square one, but like I just mm. I skated too early. I should have chilled, but it was hard to. It's hard not to take the time off. Yeah, but I my body is telling me I need to. I was watching your interview with uh, Be Real in the Hot Box, and uh, he was talking about how like skateboarders get FOMO, and I was like, that's yeah. the best way to put it, dude, because it's so true, man. Like, yeah. as soon as you can't skate for whatever reason and you really want to, and then as soon as you see like your homies or other people skating, you're like, God damn it, like fuck, man, like I wanna, I wanna go film some tricks, I wanna like you know skate around. It, like it really gives you FOMO really bad, and it's hard when you're like injured too. You know what I mean? Oh, bro, I gotta like do like you said. I gotta, I gotta do everything to take my mind off. Sk- well, I still watch skating, and I'm still, like, you know, tapped in or whatever, but, mm. like, because that's the show. Like, that's my life, skate life. We just watch the barracks or whatever, you know? But yeah. when it comes down to, like, friends going on skating, it's definitely, like, fuck, bro, I want to be there. I remember my a part of my recovery process uh, was just playing hella skate two and skate three. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just because like I was, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. like something like that, but just some, something that made me feel like I was still skating. You know what I mean? I was just like, at least I'm still doing this. Just putting hell hours on that. Do you exactly. play video games at all? Nah, I need to. We had a, we were playing the Wii a little bit back home. The um, uh, the old uh, classic the old, Wii. The OG no Wii, way, bro. that's fire, dude. <laughs> I was trying to get mine to work, and that shit just stopped working. I was so bummed. I was like, God damn it, man. Yeah, this I shit's had, sick. I hadn't seen a console in a minute. I had like Nintendo sixty four, all that stuff, when I was younger. Mm. And then my friend Terrence, he uh, came through and he brought the Wii one day and we were just going off it was so fun it brought me back made me feel like a kid again not nah, for real dude is that nostalgia you know what i'm saying we for me was a uh, was a uh, middle school it was like seventh seventh eighth grade 2007 2008 shit um yeah baby i am 40 years old <laughs> <laughs> why was that for high school for you no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> well i was gonna ask you too um I'm like I've there's I've definitely had friends who are like you know really good at keeping up with you know who is on what company and like you know in all this stuff or whatever like I've never really been too good at just keeping up with the you know that type of side of like skateboarding where it's like you know who rides for what and all that stuff mm-hmm. um how many companies like have you have you been a part of so far you know what I mean like cuz I know you've uh you've been skating since you were a little kid, you know, you went under people's wings and shit and you've been a part of mm. so many big projects but like how many companies uh, have you have you worked with just like a lot man you probably like, can't even remember at this point huh? i could try to remember and go down the line but i don't want to disrespect anybody oh and forget so like, yeah 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 street machine <laughs> was my first shop sponsor first sponsor ever mm-hmm. which is a skateboard shop so they supplied like boards and chops that, that they carried in the skate shop right? yeah, yeah, yeah um and from there that's how i got uh introduced to a lot of my friends down in san diego that's and sick. there was a company skate mafia i rode for and um skate mafia that's like how i got my start bro Fire. Was, that's family right there and i um you know, I got to travel the world for the first time, and I learned a lot. And, uh, you know, then I, I made my way to L.A. Um, we got I got on Primitive. Uh, I was fortunate to... What year was that? What year did you get on Primitive? I don't know. I went pro 2014 for them. Um, maybe, like, 2011. Mm. I think it maybe. I don't know. I, c- I can't quote God it. God damn, dude. But... Um, That's crazy. So then... Do you remember what uh, what age did you go uh, professional, or did you like officially become professional skateboarder? 2014. 2014. When was yeah. that? The fuck, 15, dude. 16, 17, 18, 19. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I, I'm so jealous of people who were born in the year 2000. <laughs> They're like, how old was I? Oh, what year is it? 2016. So Perfect. Easy. I was 16. This dude. <laughs> so easy. Bro. I know. <laughs> you you have to do no math. You're like, all right. Perfect. I was born in the perfect time. Uh, oh yeah, man, I'm yeah, down. Yeah. I was uh, I was wondering if you were down to smoke that spliff or not. I was like, should I pass it? It's but your then, world, bro. But we kept talking and shit. I'm uh, in your world, man. Oh man, dude. I, I'm number one. I want to say huge, a huge thank you for you to come through, man. Like this is a, a big you. deal for me, man. Because, uh, um, like I said, I do the podcast with uh, my girlfriend, uh, Ten Talks. But mm-hmm. we've talked about. I've brought up ideas of having like you know different people on, and she'll be like, oh, this is something like I feel like you should do by yourself. You know what I mean? Like it's. She's like, I don't think I would know too much to ask or something like that and i was just i was like i don't want to do 10 talks by myself so i, I was thinking like i want to start my own thing where i can actually interview people that mm-hmm. i feel like i would have a lot of questions for yeah, bro. and then you know just ha- have them on so i'm so glad that you you replied thanks and for having you came me, through man dog. i appreciate it. you know we've been tapped in for a minute I've been I, you followed me honestly you have a long time ago i was like dude well how the f- how'd you find me you're everywhere bro nah. you're, you're fucking- <laughs> I'm a big fan of No Jumper. You know, oh, I'm thanks. a big fan of all that. Uh, I'm big on podcasts. And I'm just on Instagram, bro. I'm always just looking, you know. And I've mm. seen your skating. And I was like, wait, 
that's the homie. He skates and he's got the fucking business side of shit. He's crushing shit. Oh, thank you, dude. You know? I appreciate it. It's cool to be able to do both things. That's like my goal is like to learn the business back end thing. Like mm-hmm. maybe I'll do a podcast or something, you know, yeah. and I'm starting to learn that world. So it's mm-hmm. cool to have both. Um, I'm still trying to kind of learn that shit too. It's like at this point, I just know how to create content, but like there's a whole other business side of things where, you know, even other people are way better at getting sponsors and all this other shit that I have no idea, you know, how to even approach that type of shit. You know what I mean? So I don't know. The beautiful thing this day and age is like, it's not the traditional way anymore. Like mm-hmm, you don't have exactly. to put a sponsor me tape out or whatever. Like, Ch- no, that's you true. You to make a whole thing and present it to the brand. Mm-hmm. You are the brand, bro. Now you're the brand you grow with, you know, you grow your shit out and they're going to attach to you. They're going to want to come to you and be a part of what you have. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. now you have the leverage and you can do the partnerships versus like trying to chase the brands. Yeah. Yeah, you know exactly. So now things have changed. It's kind of switched around. Like we now have our own platforms and mm-hmm. they're endorsing us. Yeah. Yeah. You think that's inspiration between, uh, behind like you and your brand and also a lot of, uh, you know, professional skateboarders just starting their own brand because at a certain point you just realize like, a lot of people fuck with me, you know what I mean? They were buying my boards, and it's just like, yeah, I really fuck with this brand, but, like, also, I feel like, you know, th- these people are trying to support me in particular, and it's just, like, I could make my own separate thing in which they can communicate with me directly, you know what exactly, I mean? Exactly, bro, it's direct to consumer these days, um, and like I said, like, you're a brand, so, like, people, instead of, um, well, I mean, there's, you can do it either way, you can play the game, you can get sponsored and go through the politics and all the things, mm-hmm. and, build your way up you can do it that way for sure yeah but then i do believe eventually you can get big enough to where you have your own fan base and then you can like make merch you know yeah exactly but then there's also or or an apparel brand or whatever brand you want and branch out because now you have built your name with the companies or you can be essentially like you do your own thing people catch on and then now you have your own you built your own structure out yeah you can do whatever you want technically you're basically an independent (coughs) artist like yeah that's true i'm coining the term i keep Uh, coining the term independent pro skater because i feel like that's what's coming to like mm. you may not have all the sponsors but like if you have the marketability exactly that's true engagement and you're they fuck with you then you don't you're good bro. yeah no 100 <clears throat> percent. that's a good point i didn't even think about that because yeah you're right it's like back in the day you would have to kind of rely on all these brands and stuff but nowadays it's like you can really just build up you know like fucking braille skateboards for example it's like they didn't go through all the the classical routes it's like they just built up their own thing and made their own lane in skateboarding and people you know have their opinions on it or whatever it is but it's just like but they're booming yeah they're doing their own thing it's like in skateboarding regardless of what people think exactly so it's yeah. funny because like You'll have like your top brands, right? The credible top brands in skateboarding that are like core brands, like the big brands, mm-hmm. right? But then you'll have something like way off the other, on the other end of the spectrum, like you said, bro, or something, you know, those guys over there. And it may not be looked at as perceived as like cool or whatever in the industry standards, mm-hmm. but they still have a crazy lane. Exactly. And now it's becoming to the point where they have even a bigger lane where the skate industry is going over to youtubers and things like exactly. that. exactly realizing like oh we all coincide and we can all like thrive together so we don't exactly need to judge or anything i know? feel like yeah back in the day you know most kids they would uh they would hear about something like braille and then just be, say the same thing be like oh what about all these og brands you know what i mean but nowadays kids are really getting into skateboarding because of braille and then they'll find out about the og brands later thinking like they're an offshoot you know what i yeah, mean or exactly. they're not or they're like their own thing it's like they don't, they don't really understand the whole history sometimes i guess but um no that's really that's a really good point it's like yeah you don't it's like you can completely do your own thing but uh this brings me to another question i saw um nine club did a video about this the other day and it was a good question i never really thought about where um it's like behind owners rights on clips and they were talking about um Hmm. like a skateboarder and a filmer and the company like who owns the clip behind like who actually did you know if you film something for a company the company paid for it but a filmer filmed it but you did it who actually owns that clip and i was gonna ask you like they kind of already talked about how they feel like, you know, it depends on who paid for it and all this stuff. But uh, have you ever had a situation in which you film something for maybe a high production thing, but then you want to post it on your own platform or something like that? And they're like, nah, fam, you can't do that. And you're like, I did that, though. 100%. Have you had that like, happen? I did the trick, though. How come I can't use it? And yeah, exactly. They're like, But you were on our trip. So technically, mm. contractually, we are we have hired filmers, which are contractually working for our company so technically the 
footage is just the companies. The yeah. companies. Yeah, exactly. But there's been times where I'll buy tricks because I really want to put them out. You'll buy tricks? And I'll be like, bro, like, like, um, they've already been used or something. You know? Oh, okay, and, okay. And, and they're like, well, you know, we just want to keep it exclusive and we want to keep it, you know. Wow. Say it's for a commercial or something. Mm. Right? And I'm like, well, let me get that clip, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll there's been times where, yeah, I'll just buy the clip just so I can use it. Your own then, clip, then though. I own it. Wow. At that point. It's like buying your master's or something, you know. What That's I mean? interesting. It's what like, the fuck? Like That's insane. To music, you know? Wow. I never even fucking thought about that. Damn, you you got to buy your own clip back so that you could post it sometimes. Yeah. That's insane. Think about a mu- think about an artist, like, like a rapper or something. Like if they're signed to a big agent or whatever, Universal or something, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and they put out something with them and it, the production is through universal exactly and they're like well fuck i want to use that they probably would have to yeah they have to go through universal and be like hey can i use this song in a burger king commercial and they're like nah dude exactly damn that's fucking crazy um but it's it's, it feels like so much more um like i don't know intimate when it's like a physical thing like skateboarding you know what i mean like when it's like oh you hired me to do a graphic design okay you know what i mean that's yours you know what i mean it's not my it's not my logo because you asked me to do it that exactly but with skateboarding is like it's like it took me years to learn how to frontside flip and I busted my ass trying to frontside flip that stair set and now you own that even though like I it took me two months of recovery uh, you know went to three boards fucking all the stress Blood and all this shit and tears. yeah it's fucking crazy but they're like no well we our filmer filmed you <laughs> but then you know you can also God get damn. to the point where like you hire your own filmer and um, then it becomes a, p- a place of like you know um all right, I have this footage, you know, uh, if you want to use it. Oh, yes, yeah, so you just provide it to them. Exactly. Interesting. Okay, okay. That's, like, kind of how I always, tour, you know, I, mm. like, I like to, more recently, like to do it that, that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, film with, like, my own personal filmer, and then if, like, a brand needs it, even Instagram, whatever, brand deal, mm-hmm. then, you know, here you go, what's your budget, boom. Okay, okay. Because then you have the leverage. You think, uh, oh, well, um, w- uh, uh, without being injured, when you're, you know, completely fine to skate, how are you... Are you filming all the time or are you filming like, you know, only specifically when you have a, a project or a plan in mind? It's been very divided, honestly, since like COVID. Um, since starting my own brand, there's just a lot that, you know, goes into the just a lot of back end stuff mm. to owning a brand. No. Yeah. You know? um, I, 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 I sell T-shirts shit, and even and that shit can be stressful. So, yeah. Service and all that. Um, so yeah no 100 percent um do you uh, you make your own graphics or you work with someone to to like uh to make them i outsource um i have a good friend that mostly make makes most of them mm. uh but i've been outsourcing like honestly i reached out to blazy oh really <laughs> like, yo your shit's crazy like what would it take and he hit me back and i was, and I, I haven't hit him back because i'm like dude i want to come with something good i can't just like yeah 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 yeah. Dude, that would be fucking legendary. Are you, uh, you and Vlazzy, uh shirt or, or whatever, crazy. you know, like a design. That would be something, fucking fire. Yeah. So, like, he would go crazy for sure. Or like make a wolf ass tray or something. Like Dude, for real. So you've, you've seen the Vlazzy, Ashley before then, right? We got to put the wolf head on the, on the, on the shorty. Oh, though. my God. Like you're ashing into an open mouth of a wolf or something like that. That would be fucking sick. Um, damn. Let's go. Dude, you know what else I realized uh, the other day when I was uh, scrolling through like old videos of you on uh, YouTube is... Uh, I'm sorry. I watched... Uh, <laughs> I watched that video a long time ago, and I didn't realize who it is now. But it's the you you used to skate with Lil Will, yeah. who's Will Fiok, or I don't know how to say his last name. But um, he's grown into such an amazing bro. Skater. He looks like, so different now, bro. It's I was like I I saw that the other day. I was like, oh my god, that's him. I didn't. I just put that together the other day in my head. I was like, "That's the same dude." I was like, "What the fuck?" He's all tatted and fucking just shreds like crazy now. now, bro. bro. Is that trippy to see for you? Like, this is some little kid you used to skate with. Like, that's insane, man. I, I've known that. I've known him since he was eight, bro. Wow. And he's all. He's been. He's been that good since he was like six. No so, way, really. So, jeez. Yeah, I met him like when he like first started skating, and then like yeah, the day his voice changed, I was like, "Who the <laughs> fuck are you?" <laughs> <laughs> and then he got power and started just doing all this crazy shit and i'm like all right bro you do your thing bro i'm not trying to keep up with you damn you know, no just, bro he's he just, insane he's man. magic on a skateboard for sure damn he's been fucking super good since six like i feel like sometimes i feel bad 
uh, not bad, but like I just feel like, man, I wish I started skating earlier because I started skating like, I don't know, 13 or like 12 or something like that. And I, you know, come across people who were there like, oh, I've been skating since I was three. I've been skating since I was four. I'm like, fuck, man, like they have years on me, dude. I was like, I, I, I wish I started skating earlier sometimes, you know. But it's like this, though. How many hours were you able to put on a skateboard? There's people who that's have, true, have that's that, true. that's their whole life and that, that's all they do. No, 100 percent. They dedicate everything to it. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Like the live streaming, you know, it's like the more you do it, the more yeah. muscle memory you're going to gain and it's going to become more uh, quick, quick fire. No, 100%. Um, Dude, I was thinking of uh, this the other day, too, where um, there's that saying um, about how, like, it's not the destination, it's the journey, right? Yeah, and I was Kevin thinking how, Romar, like... Shout out to uh, Kevin Romar. That's oh, shout out to Kevin Romar. He says that? That's my brother, yeah. Uh, but, uh... That's his brand right there. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Okay, mm -hmm. but uh, I was bringing up uh, that because I was thinking, like, skateboarding is, like, a really good example of that because... With skateboarding, like I didn't, I, when I got into skateboarding, I did see my friends, you know, doing all these amazing tricks and thinking like, oh, I want to do that one day. But I wasn't really sitting there all day kind of stressing about like, can't kickflip yet, I can't kickflip yet. Like I was really just going to the park, sm just smoking, chilling with my friends all day. You know <laughs> what I mean? And then after two, three years, you realize, oh, I can back backside uh -huh. flip now. I can front side flip now. Yeah. It's like you just, it just kind of comes with the whole, you know, with the whole experience of it. And it's like, it's not like you're just sitting there working away, trying to, you know, grind mm -hmm. these tricks out. It's mm -hmm. like, it just kind of comes naturally with with the the journey of you know it's, fucking hanging out with your homies and chilling outside all day yeah it's like a universal thing it's based on the energy you know your what your however your friends are and whoever you're skating with mm -hmm. that's what you feed off of and like you say yeah like could turn into like let's see who can backside flip the double set first you know exactly you exactly next thing you know five years down the line you're backside flipping some shit for some for an ad and you're like whoa it's crazy i remember <laughs> when i was Smoking at the park. <laughs> He's trying to back up with the double set. You know? God damn. It's beautiful. Have you have you been um smoking like your whole like how long have you been smoking like your whole Ta skateboarding career? Um, I think skateboarding and cannabis kind of go hand in hand. No, hundred like, percent. Jump in the van, the tour van, <laughs> young dude, they hand you you know your first little joint or whatever. The and that's kind of how it starts. And, um, but um, I, I became a I guess a, s a weed connoisseur after that, and just kind of. Dove into the industry, so. Were you always um, like open about it and making it a part of your brand? Because I've I've definitely heard of skateboarders where they would like they would hide you know certain parts of their personal lifestyle because they wanted to be ad friendly you <laughs> know or something like that like politically it, correct yeah or some shit like did did you ever um, were you always like kind of just like open about that stuff? It's, it's so funny you say that, bro. Because I love how like in the know you are, dude. Because I don't think this shit's really talked about too much. You oh, know what I'm saying? thank you, man. Um, so it's really cool. Um, but, you know, growing up, I had corporate sponsors, big, big corporate contracts mm -hmm. um, to where, you know, the the moms and the dads are the ones buying the product for their kids. Exactly. So you got to be very careful <coughs> yeah. on what you're promoting, especially years back when weed wasn't as accepted and, mm -hmm. and normalized they're not gonna buy the weed graphic for their 15 year old you know what i mean they're gonna like, be like well this n dude's over here doing this shit exactly why am i gonna buy this so that my kid can they're not even gonna want their kid to be influenced to be influenced by that because yeah. then they're gonna think oh now my kid's gonna want to smoke weed and shit exactly exactly but, but now these days it's all kind of um come full circle and people are understanding that weed is is uh, a medicine mm -hmm. and i believe that it helps with soreness and no 100 uh, percent. yeah helps, it helps with skating you know mentally. yeah dude. um there's like there's a like it's super bad in like football for example where like these dudes are fucking their bodies up they're going to their doctor saying hey man my back and my shoulder hurt and their doctor's like take this percocet take this vicodin yeah. you know take all this shit hey can i smoke weed instead no you can't do that and then they end up dying from like liver disease and fucking exactly, liver failure dude. because of all this shit in instead of just smoking the weed you know what exactly, i mean like bro. which is at least in skateboarding you know they're not really pushing pills i guess you know no, what i mean exactly um and uh, yeah it's a more of a mellow lifestyle like you don't see people getting in a car and crashing on you know they'd rather just sit at home and fucking order some food and post up no know? facts like some alcohol or something like um there's definitely par party there skateboarders though on it for sure no um, yeah yeah but it's cool now, yeah, because, like I said, it's more accepted. Mm -hmm. um, and thankfully, the internet, the way it's, you know, kind of turned these days. Um, yeah. It's, it's more accepted, and, and everything's, 
it just all coincides, you know? Mm -hmm. No, exactly. Like, it just, it goes like with one music, another. music, skateboarding, and cannabis, they all go together. You jump in the van. A hundred percent, dude. And you listen to some music. Yeah, that it's was. It's all relatable. That was my, uh, my senior project was about how, like, um, how music, uh, like I, 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 it was like I forget it was like kind of corny. I was basically talking about how like oh music makes me skate better. Like if I'm just skating like and I'm not listening to music, it it's kind of whack. But throw some headphones in, I'm like, I just get all pumped. You know what yeah. I mean? I like made my senior project about that shit. But it's true. It's yeah. like I didn't really care about listening to music at all before I started skateboarding. Then I got to skateboarding. My homies are putting me onto like Big L and fucking like you know all these different artists and shit. And I'm just like oh you know this is fire, dude. And this too like. The video games, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I don't know if you played oh, that. Oh, you know, exactly. People growing up played Tony Hawk Pro Skater, and there's soundtracks Bro, to Tony Hawk Pro Skater. hundred percent. So you relate, you know, to the video game while you're skateboarding. It motivates you. Like mm -hmm. I said, it's all universal. It's all based off energy, um, based on who you're skating with. That's you know, you're gonna you're gonna feed off that. Right? Yeah. It's all. To this day, I remember the fucking break on through to the other yeah. side and fucking Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Same, like, bro. I remember being a kid, like, what is what is this song? I want to find it. You know, it wasn't as easy back in the day yeah. to find shit, like, you know, what song it was, but damn. And, and then you hear, like, on the TV randomly or something, and it brings you right back to when you're playing the video. No, game, for real, like, oh, for real. 100%, dude. Mm -hmm. um, I also saw, like, a, in a, one of the interviews, you said that, like, you've, you're uh, super close with Nicky Diamonds, or you've known him for a long time. Yeah, that's and family. How long have you known? Like, what? Uh, how old were you when you met him? So, when I was 12 or 13, still living in San Diego, Jeez. was when he first started, like, uh, sending me diamond stuff. Oh, wow. And was it just hardware at that time, or uh, t-shirts and shit? It was, um, it started out as hardware, and then he made t-shirts, and that started popping. So, he yeah. Was, um, yeah, when Dude, started making shirts. Was that insane for, for you to see? Like, you were probably a kid, so, like, were you even thinking about it like that? But did you really notice, like, damn, this brand has taken over the world? Because everyone wore diamond. You know what I mean? Like, I remember thinking about it, like, Dude, this was a hardware brand where like yeah. I would buy their hardware, and then like in 2012 already it was like all the lit kids in school are wearing diamond. I'm just like, damn, what the fuck? Like this came full circle, like exactly, crazy, bro, and real fast too. Um, diamond popped off was like in the the super, like everyone was wearing diamond basically when I was in LA when I had already been in LA mm -hmm. for a little bit. Um, Were you skating for them already? And at yeah, that point? I had skated for them since I was 12 and moved to Jeez. LA. And then I was fortunate enough to have the second Diamond commercial, like when, before like really skate commercials were like really, um, you hand that to me? Oh yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's a spliff <laughs> though. I'm not sure if you're cool with those. It's all good. Okay. Um, Damn, that's fucking fire, and bro. Yeah, so I was fortunate enough to film the first commercial and, um, and then it blossomed from there. And then eventually uh, I had, I gave, I gave him the idea. I was like, hey man, we should start a shoe company. Cause he already had diamond footwear. He's already making shoes. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, yo, let's make this like a real thing, like like a um a shoe brand, like skate brand. Uh huh. And you know, like, let's go, put put your foot on the gas. Let's get it. And th that's how you got your pro model. You kind of like started diamond, and then yeah, uh, no that way. went for a couple for a couple years, and then um I got my pro model, um which was amazing. I got to design it and everything, and learn the you know all the logistics and stuff about the shoe brand. And yeah, how to yeah. Make shoes, bro. And so I learned a lot. But that's I, I forgot who was talking about it, but um, I heard someone talking about like how, what it takes to make shoes, and they were talking about fucking the factories you got to hit up, and these factories are all working with all these other brands, and and uh, and like there's you have to you have to hit up another factory to make the bottom sole part, and also um, it's like the longer you work with the factory, the more consistent they are with their with their soles, because if you're like a small brand hitting up the same factory, mm -hmm. you might not get exactly the same sole from last year as you did the next year. I was just like, bro, this Imagine seems so that. complicated, dude. Like, and so fucked up. Like, you just can't even have a consistent product. You know what I mean? So Almost. Much, there's, and, and the cost is crazy. Like, I learned about the cost and everything. I don't know if this is, like, right on it, but give or take. Um, They were telling me it's, like, $10,000 to make one um mold. So I just think one mold. I think I heard something like size, that, too. Jeez. One size? size? 10K. Oh. And then each, you know, you go from six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight, eight, you know. Uh, Bro. And, and that's, and then, you know, learning, um, just like the time it takes for a shoe to be made and God like damn. i basically came him came to nick with the idea of um putting two shoes together it was like a jordan and another shoe and putting them together and like we created that and okay like, so it's crazy to see the whole process but god damn long story short i've known nick for a long time that's family still good friends with him and yeah, everything 100 percent. that's fucking insane bro he like it, he used to skate right 
And he, then and then he, he just sta- he like he still skates. Yeah, he can. He can jump on the mini ramp and do some shit. Oh can. really? I was oh, gonna yeah. say like he used to skate and shit. Like I remember like I don't know, th- th- hearing uh, something about him skating He's back in the day. San Francisco OG man. Mm, he okay, grew okay, up okay. With okay. All the legends. There you go. There you go. Okay. Yep. San Francisco. SF. Yeah. Oh, was, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you like uh? The, so sa- now that you've lived in San Diego and LA half and half basically, do, which one do you enjoy more? Your I know your heart's probably in San Diego. My mom's in San Diego, so my heart's for sure in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Um, got the family in SD, got a lot of friends, you know, childhood friends. Um, it's very, very mellow and laid back. It's like a, uh, I like to call it a retirement city. So with that being said, like, I could see that, um, you know, you move away and then do your business, which LA is good for business. The skate industry is Mm. here, especially during the time I moved here. Now it's a little different. You can be more remote and stuff. Yeah. Right. You can be anywhere. Um, LA is good for business and all the brands are here and all, all, all the people, the friends are here, you know? So yeah. Yeah. Get it, get, get, um, hopefully make something of myself, you know, have something to stand on and then eventually come back to San Diego and mm. enjoy. You would want to retire there? Yeah. Really? For sure. Live there forever? Yeah. I forgot. I think I went to La Jolla. Is that a oh, part of it? so nice. Yeah. I went over there for one time for my, uh, for my birthday. My girlfriend took me there and it was really cool. I liked it. Yeah, it was chill. It's a vibe. It's yeah. like Lamello, right? Dude, I never seen more blonde people in my life. <laughs> I swear. I was walking around. I was like, dude, this is insane. Dude, everyone's blonde, bro. You sure you weren't in the OC? <laughs> um, I don't know. Probably. Yeah. They have that same, the same thing too. But I was like, yo, this is insane. Exactly. When I went to the skate park too, I, I forgot what park I went to. Uh, I forgot the name of it, Ocean but um, um, one of the North County parks. It's uh, God damn, I'm trying to think of like a unique part of it. It's that really, really large uh, park. It's not close to San Diego though. We have to drive like 30 minutes away. But oh, you might be going towards down south, National City, or something like where the Brown Brothers are. You I was gonna say everyone was blonde at that park too. Towards, oh. When I went to that park, I was like, yo, everyone's blonde out here. I don't know. And then I, I was uh, my my girlfriend yeah. Riley. She was like, she was like, when I lived out here, I was blonde too. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Why is everyone blonde? It's just a thing. You get so much sun out there. You always at the beach. Your hair just turns blonde. no for real you get like bleach through <laughs> by the sun or whatever um but so you have your own uh board company yes. we are wolves um it's a lifestyle brand okay a, uh, uh, a creative outlet for me to just express myself oh, okay so it's not necessarily just one item br- uh, uh, company ultimately just to to give back in any way like mm. like i said it'd be cool to make ashtrays you know just any thing i can share from my creative yeah, yeah exactly like a designer i guess i don't know you just sit there and think of random to, shit like yeah just whatever you use on the daily no exactly you can implement that monetize everything sometimes i have that too where i'm just like you know it would be cool to make these like random little things but then i think about making it and i'm like i, I wouldn't even know the first step to, <laughs> to do you know what i mean i'm like how the fuck would you even create something like this you know what i mean especially like a a custom ashtray yeah i don't know how he did <laughs> yeah exactly he was showing me like some of the, the renderings and shit like he had made it was like these computer the fucking like 3d m- yeah and i'm like <laughs> i'm like i don't even know how much <laughs> that costs to have someone fucking make some shit like that for you that's insane dude dragon dropping all this shit <laughs> <laughs> that's sick um, how long have you been working on the 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 brand the we, we are we wolves, are brand? wolves i feel like it's been around for a few years um but i must most um, recently started pushing it mm. the last like couple of years. Um, just so I've been really busy, you know, focused on skating and yeah. Um, but now I'm in a place, you know, where I can kind of go full steam ahead. Um, but we did do like like speaking of diamond, we did a diamond collab last year. So oh really? We definitely have a little bit of traction. Right. Man. It's been fun, dude. No, that's sick. Um, you like working on the brand just as much as you do skating for sure. It's just like it's almost like when I started skating. It's really? like I'm learning so much as I go along mm. and exercising my creative in a different way. Not maybe like physically how skating is, but yeah. mentally, you know, and um, just putting ideas out there. And, mm. um, I don't know, because I feel like skaters are visionaries too. Like no, 100%. Strongest yeah. Strongest manifestors. You think about a trick over and over and over, and eventually you keep grinding and you do it. Yeah, I, be- I was thinking about that the other day, uh, day too, where like you keep hearing of these ultra successful people nowadays recently where they talk about how like I used to be a skateboarder. You know what I mean? Like Virgil yeah. Abloh and shit yeah. and like all these other people where they're like, I Shout came from a skateboarding Virgil, culture. Man. You know what I mean? And now I'm yeah. doing this and you're like realizing like, yeah, skateboarding has like, you know, it has a huge ass influence and, and awesome. it definitely has that thing where... um it's like it kind of shows you where there's definitely people where they can pick up a board and they'll they'll be able to kick flip semi easily you know pretty quickly or whatever mm-hmm. but then there's people where they cop on a board they're extremely uncoordinated cannot even get close to it and, and they have to grind so hard to learn the kick flip mm-hmm. but they'll learn it regardless and exactly. you kind of at the end of that process you learn like dude 
I could put my mind to anything. You can and apply it to life. Exactly. That it really is the kind of the hack to life where it's yeah. just don't give up. You know what I mean? Just like yeah. if you see something, kind of you kind of have to have this pers- like weird ass persistence where you're like, I'm just gonna keep trying this over and over. And it's like in skateboarding, it's even funnier when you're trying something and it just looks funny as hell every time you fuck up and yeah. you and you keep trying it a hundred times uh, and if there's someone staring at you they're like this is a crazy person this like not gonna do this yeah like he's exactly not. he's not gonna land this and he just looks Failing insane he just keeps going over, back and, and forth but then you land it on one try you're like this is what i was grinding and for and that feeling is just so worth it mm-hmm. and you realize and like that, all it took was me not giving up and tr- continuing to try you know apply that to life and that's why i think skaters are very special and very cut out to be able to maneuver and get get through anything because um, mm-hmm. we're 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 mentally trained to like you said just grind out whatever and, and keep striving to to make it happen and eventually it will exactly i remember thinking i was like uh talking with one of my homies who's like smoking and drinking and shit and i was like i was like you think if some dude who's never touched a skateboard before saw a rail and you told him hey uh try tray flip crook and keep trying this for 10 years <laughs> And you think if he like doesn't ever t- take the time to learn how to ollie or anything else, he just keeps trying. He just keeps hucking his body. He's not scared. He keeps getting injured, but he keeps recovering, keeps trying. You think after 10 years, someone can eventually just just do that one trick, tray flip crook, if they just keep trying that one thing. It just all depends on who the person is, man. It, it, I feel um, like it is possible. I feel like just any uh, with that amount of time, you know what I mean? Like your body's just going to get used to it, <laughs> learn the muscle memory. It's the survival of the fittest. That's why, like, you hear people, they're like, oh, I rolled my ankle one time, and I was done. It's like, it just, how yes. bad do you want it? You know Bro, yeah, that's the one thing you, you always hear as a skateboarder, too, is like, hey, I used to skate, but then I got injured, and I was over it. And you're just like, yeah, that's that's the thing about skateboarding is you have, that shows that you want to skate is the injuries is just a part of the process exactly. where you're just like, yeah, fuck it, dude. I'm, I'm sitting in bed for a month, I guess, you know, this time. It's crazy, yeah. Like, oh, man, it's hard to go to the bathroom just to walk to the bathroom. Bro, showering. Oh, well, I can't wait to do that kick the back tail. I I'm know. Better. That's all your mind is on. Bro. Did you, well, I, I remember he, uh, hearing that uh, you were saying your mom's always been super supportive of your skateboarding career, but I remember when I was, like, younger, um, like I would get injured, my parents would be like, "Bro, like stop skating. This is not worth it." You know what I mean? Because yeah. I've like I've broke my ankle like twice. I've did like a bunch of other shit, and then like every time my parents are just like, you know, looking at me laying down in the hospital bed or whatever. Oh, they're like, man. "Like this is not worth it, Yuri. Like quit it." And I'm just like, "No, it is. This shit's fun." But you know, that, if that's what you love and that's your passion, bro, and you just keep going, dude, and no one can stop you. Yeah. You know, but yeah, my mom's always been very supportive. Um, she's just always yeah had had my back no matter whatever situation i was going through good mm. bad you know she always just n- gave me the um courage that and the you know just let me know that i can get through it and i think that's what ultimately filled my passion and that's why i've been mm. able to i guess get this far the support yeah because mom for sure that's sick that's fire as fuck mm. um yeah i'm not gonna say my, my parents weren't supportive either but i feel like they just didn't understand they were just like you know they were just like bro you're just getting injured you know what i mean like nothing's really happening and all that stuff and it's just like yeah i kind of just i don't know it was was, it's like it's like a weird thing but that's sick to hear and um it's like that sounds like something you would you ever want to have kids in your life um sure i mean it'd be cool to have a kid eventually and it'd be cool to have a boy for sure get him on the board Mm. I mean, no, nah, there's girl skaters too. Actually, they're crushing it. No, so yeah, hundred, especially right way, now, dude. It'd be cool to, you know, no, if, yeah. if that's what they chose to do, it'd be no, cool, yeah. you know. No, but that would be sick to apply those like kind of same methods, for, you know, for yeah, your kids. Just, just be like hella supportive just and all teach, that stuff. Teach them, you know, and just be there for them. And but what do you do if you if your 15 year old son comes back smelling like backwoods and you're just like. <laughs> God damn I it. I gotta show him how to roll. <laughs> oh, shit. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're like, did you I'm roll it right? I'm just kidding. Nah. That's fucking funny. Uh. <laughs> that, uh, oh, yeah, speaking of skating also, I was going to ask you this is like, the more like you, I feel like I've noticed this in me, like the more I progress, you know, I, I've progressed, the more like I kind of don't want to go back to learning shit you know what i mean like if there's tricks that i know that cause me a lot of trouble mm-hmm. i'll just avoid them because i'm like eh, i don't want to go through the learning process of doing this again like n- you know now that you're professional on this like high level of skateboarding uh, do you ever feel like you know you go back to some tricks where, or like still try to learn new tricks that cause you a lot of trouble but you're actually sitting there you know looking goofy you know fucking trying to <laughs> flick this weird trick out hell yeah really for sure um but there's been like like you said there's been multiple times where like i've spend countless hours days months whatever trying a trick to get it on trying to get a trick on film 
and then say I land the trick and you know uh, it took me a lot of energy whatever it may have been mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, I don't want to ever do that trick again. I, I got it out of the way. Oh, really? It's out there. We're good. And mm. I won't go back to like that. Like some complicated manual or ledge just, trick? Yeah, something crazy where you're just like, wow, I can't believe I walked away. I'm not trying that again. No, I feel that. <laughs> There's definitely tricks you want to learn where you're like, I want this to be like a, a consistent casual where I could just, you know, mm -hmm. whip it out. But then there's those tricks where you're like, I'm glad I did that. And mm -hmm. I'm good on, uh, you know, not doing this all over again. Do you want a LaCroix or anything like that? I want something to drink? Um... Yeah, no, my bad. Uh, could you guys sure. uh, pass one? My bad. I should have offered you one beforehand. Nah, you're good. Shout bro. out to Riley. She texted me. She's like, offer him a drink <laughs> or something. I'm Thank so, you. my bad. <laughs> I got God. caught, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my bad, dude. God damn it. Nah, you're good. Um, <laughs> but uh, we need to start getting water bottles and shit. Cheers, man. Uh, I noticed in your escape uh, footage, at least I ha I don't see, you don't have headphones in ever. Wow, you're very um, observant. Obs but uh, observe, uh, observe it. yeah yeah. Observe it? yeah i think that's the right word um, <laughs> <What> a, <laughs> you <pay> attention. <laughs> thank you man but uh i'm stoned my bad i was gonna say <laughs> is like i noticed that like back in the day you know it was no one really cared but nowadays it's kind of like a forbidden thing where they don't want you wearing headphones is it because of brand shit like why um, now i feel like just things are, it's more about like the individual like the brand's attached to like the individuality and the authenticity of the person. Um, mm. So they want you to kind of just be yourself. Uh, back then, I wouldn't say they didn't want you to be yourself, but back then it was more like a, a certain mold, you know what I mean? Like this is how skating is, this is how the culture is. And it was kind of more small back then. So yeah. now it's branched out. You, there's a lot of, like you said, mostly everyone has skated. So the culture has reached incredible limits like you said with virgil louis vuitton all that stuff's open crazy doors so, mm -hmm. um yeah man but uh uh you like do you <coughs> without filming do you use headphones um i'm weird i think music in my head is a distraction really and i think mainly is because i can't hear my board popping i feel that i kind of feel you that know what I'm saying? you gotta Music's hear the, the sound can't. of the wheels and shit and i'm very like i don't know how to explain it i'm very like I go by like the feeling, you know what I mean? Like when the board hits my foot, I know, oh shit, okay, it's in the right spot. Mm. Try to put that shit down. Versus like if there's music playing, I might be focused on some rapper's lyrics. Yeah, something. yeah, you know yeah, I saying? feel that. Okay, yeah, that 100% that makes sense. Um, interesting, okay. Uh, what do you think about the skateboarding in the Olympics? Because like I know that skateboarding for some people, it's kind of like, it's not a competitive thing. You know what I mean? It's not a competition thing. It's more like, you know what I mean? Like, I just like to skate and I'm, and I'm good at it or whatever. It's like, I, I don't want to apply this in a, in a competitive field or whatever. But, um, like, now, now that skateboarding is in the Olympics, you think it's going to add some sort of, like, new um, baseline level to, you know, the average viewer where they're like, oh, you got to be, like, this good because they're Olympians. You know what I mean? Like, it's like you're not a good skateboarder because you dress like this and you don't look like this or you don't skate like that or whatever it is. Um, like, you do wallies instead of fucking kickflip back smiths or, you know. I think that there's many lanes in skateboarding now. Um, mm -hmm. And you can be an Olympic skater on that top tier, like... <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. No, you're good. LaCroix. Um, <laughs> contest, you know, driven and, and be that type of skater. And you could be a street skater. Mm -hmm. But then there's the street skaters too, you know. But then there's the the more content-driven skaters that like to make, like, fun commercials and stuff. So there's that's so true, many that's different true. lanes. Um, but I will say that the Olympics is definitely bringing um, a lot of revenue to skateboarding and, and the industry. And I think it's a good thing because it's growing skateboarding. It's getting more people on the board. Exactly. Which is big, creating more of an awareness. And it's <coughs> just um, ultimately feeding, you know, people's lifestyles that just start out as a passion. So it's no, 100%. allowing people to make a living off the shit. No, that's true. That's you know true. Because like you are saying, it wasn't as big before. You know I mean, yes, it was already like a large thing or whatever, but like now it's kind of, it's just a part of culture where there's literally fucking... Um, uh, designer brands, you know, implementing skateboards as a part of their fucking t-shirts. Yeah, you seen that dude. one where it was like a broken skateboard yeah. in the shape of a heart <laughs> on a t-shirt? It's like, what? It doesn't even make sense sometimes where you're like, okay, I, you know, I guess I get it, you yeah. know? Yeah, they're just, you know, they're just trying to be a part of the, the, the crew, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. We'll welcome them all up. Um, <laughs> uh, fuck, what was the other thing I want to ask? Oh, yeah, uh, speaking of battling tricks, which we were talking about a little bit earlier, 
I heard you talk about how like you've done certain tricks where you you've had to go back to the spot like ten plus times. You know what I mean? Like where ten plus different days, no matter how far apart they are, like you have to keep going back to keep yeah. trying this thing. Do you ever reach a point where you're like, this is not worth it? You know what I mean? Like I don't want to, I don't want to continue trying this because I'm just wasting my time, the filmer's time, and you bro, know. I'm stubborn as hell. So really? Like, um, a lot of the times I'll go back like multiple times, like you said, and even there's been times where I'll like be so tired and just might have no energy of just from trying that same trick and mentally drained and i don't even think about doing this anymore and so i'll go try something else so i'll go to something else uh -huh. and then i'll come back to that and sometimes that'll work oh okay okay i feel trick. that yeah no I, 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 i've definitely done that done that before too where you can't yeah, do one trick break, yeah. you try another one and then you just come back exactly, to it yeah. interesting okay um have you ever had that i've had it t t like for me before where um for example, like, I think it happened with kickflip nose manuals a long time ago where I was just like, I always want to learn it. Every time I tried it, I would hit my shin or, you know, mm. something happened where I just could not do it. And then one day I remember just waking up and I just like felt it in my brain. I was just like, I can kickflip nose manual today. And then I remember met, I met up with my homies, went to a ledge and then I just like, I had it figured out. You know what I mean? Like, it's mm -hmm. like, it's weird. Like I slept on like it and just like clicked in my yeah. head. Like, have you ever had it where you wake up one day and like this th trick you've been thinking about or something that you have never done before and you're like, it makes sense now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, now I know what's going on here. I've had that at a spot, like, while I'm skating a spot. Say I'm trying to film a certain trick, and eh, it's not working, and I'm like, I'll flick something out, and I'm like, oh, shit. And then, like, in my head, I'm like, oh, I can just do this, and then it mm -hmm. works sometimes. No, but yeah, exactly. other times, you're like, it takes multiple trips back, like you said. So. Mm -hmm. It's manifestation, bro. It's just, like, what you believe in your head. Dude. That's actually kind of true, Honestly. too. Yeah, just fucking thinking about it all the time and just yeah. knowing, like, I, I'm going to do this eventually or whatever. Mm -hmm. When you're filming, uh, like, in, when you're doing some of those things that take you going back, like, 10 plus times, have you ever gone back without the filmer on your own time just to be like, I'm going to try Test this just to fucking, like, you know, get the muscle memory in a little bit harder? I've done that before I brought the filmer to the spot just to see you know, just so when we get there, mm. um, I'm not wasting his time or anything like that. Yeah. Um, you know, just so I know what we're in for. Um, and yeah, like, you know, threw the trick out a couple of times and just like kind of prepped for it and been like, all right, let's go back in a couple of days when I'm ready, you know? Jeez. Yeah. Have you had the situation where you finally get the trick and then the film is like, dude, I my, there was a leaf in the way or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like something happened and you're just like, no, bro. Like, has yeah, that happened to you? That's happened. Just maybe a handful of times oh, okay not, not very many mm. um but you know it's mistakes happen you know things happen but it is unfortunate when you've been trying it for a long time and you do it and if you you know you do it like how you wanted to do it yeah and, and bro you capture it that's there's, the time, there's times too where like you'll do it how you want to do it then capture it and then the one you do and they put out we have to end up putting out is the one you didn't want to bro like i, did it I feel that because you were just like dude the other one it just felt better uh -huh. if for some reason but at the end of the day it's all love man and mistakes happen dude i couldn't imagine being a filmer bro like dude i know for real that's yeah. a whole nother whole that's side of saying, politics bro. and weird mystical shit if you got to figure out as well and media there wouldn't be us so like we got to salute the filmer no 100 percent facts they're sitting there <laughs> so fucking it's filming a hundred plus tries just dude. so you can land it one, one of them hopefully son. dude you have to have so much patience bro i would be like fuck this guy Nick, <laughs> i know he didn't do it in three tries bro and sometimes on, like bro. the skateboarder isn't necessarily being like very uh you right. know um sympathetic towards the skate <laughs> uh the filmer dude. they're just like fuck everything yeah, fuck you yeah. fuck you like, like i'm you know like they just don't even care or you go to a spot that sometimes they'll go to they'll go to a spot and like the They'll think they want to do something and it'll just be too gnarly. And they'll bring the film and the photographer out. Oh. There's been times where I did that, but I forced myself. I had to try it at really? least, you know, a few times. No way. But, like, a spot will be crazy and you're just like, yeah, I think I can kickflip that. And you bring, all right, two filmers, <sighs> photographer, let's shoot this ad. No. I think I got this. And then you're just like, hey, guys, I'm sorry. I've seen that happen. Have you? You've been through that, too? I had to pack it up. Um, I don't think I've been through that. Like I said, um, oh, I just fuck. forced myself, bro. I was like, I got to try at least one. Like, yeah, at least. Because hey, they'll guys, be happy. I'm sorry, bro. Like, hopefully just I'm going to try it once. Try to do a first try. Like, But I'm yeah. scared if I can't 
we'll come back or something. But like, I'm gonna try once for y'all at mm. least, you know. Yeah. Because if you go there and you know they set up, it takes a while mm. for them. They got all the equipment. You could do the soccer thing and like pretend to be injured and be like, "Yo, guys, my bad, <laughs> my ankle's busted, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Can't try this shit anymore." <laughs> yeah. Fake an injury. Exactly. So okay. you can get out of filming a spot. I know. Um, I, w- I wanted to ask you this too because I've heard this happening to one of my uh, friends before, um, or like one of my friends of a friend. But uh, anyways, he. Uh, was filming for some company or whatever it is and he had no control over the song they were choosing and he said they chose like the wackiest corniest song for him and he was so bummed he was just like he was like i was so excited with my footage and so yeah. hyped but the song that came out I, he's like i would never listen to that song in a million years that have you have that <laughs> had that happen to you uh i wouldn't say to me they've always chose really good songs do you I've get to like been stoked on do you get to have any input on the song the, a lot of the times they'll edit it up or like they'll be close to edit finishing it and they'll show it to me and and like hey what do you think of this mm. and, um most of the time you know they they already got they, they they know what they're doing so yeah 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 i just be like yeah that's great that looks dope you know maybe move some things around or whatever okay um but there's never been like a a crazy song or anything <laughs> but um yeah like on the business side like that comes with like uh music rights like a lot of times oh if a brand especially if there's like a team video and they're doing a premiere or they're selling if they're selling it Mm -hmm. somewhere then um they have to get the music rights dude um, and that can cost a lot of money exactly so they'd probably be like hey bro i know you want to skate to biggie smalls but this is shit man and your part looks great to biggie smalls yeah but hey man there's this guy can we're just gonna use this one like sorry yeah exactly that makes sense we can't no, Sorry. especially nowadays. Cause yeah. Back in the day, you didn't have to care about that at all. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, it's I wonder did big companies have to get music rights back in the it's day first? Been that way, yeah. Really? Especially yeah, if you use like a Beatles song or something crazy, you mm. know, then yeah, I think like you got to get the rights. And Jesus Christ! Unless you just like put it on. As long as you're not selling it, I think. If it's just like oh. a free video and it's just out there, I think you're good. But just put on YouTube or something yeah. like that. It would be fine. Back then it was like DVDs and stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. VHSs so. and shit. Mm-hmm. Remember 411? 411, yeah. 411. The on video. The on video? Rodney versus Day One. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. That was a classic. I, I have, I still have like a, a DVD, a 411 fucking DVD that's somewhere. fire, bro. Um, it's all scratched up and shit. <laughs> <laughs> probably can't play that thing. Before the Blu-ray, man. Um, How long have you known uh, NKA videos? Oh, wow. Um, I've known Nigel since basically I moved to L.A. Really? So, um, like, 17 or some yeah, shit? Yeah, 19 or so. I mean, Dang. A couple, I met him a couple years into living here, um, and he allowed me to be on his YouTube channel and, and definitely helped get my name out there, and um, I was on a lot of his segments and stuff when he was first starting out, so yeah. shout out to Nigel. Dude, I noticed, like, I was going to say that I kind of noticed that with his channel or, or just him as a person where... Uh, it's like sometimes people see, you know, a young up and coming talent mm-hmm. and they'll like try to, you know, help them, but then also, you know, attach themselves to that person in a way where they get to benefit with them. But I've noticed that like, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but this is me just speculating, but I've noticed with NK, it's kind of like, he just helps people like exactly. kind of put, get put on random kids. You know exactly. what I mean? It's like, he'll just find a kid who's super good in fucking East LA or Compton or, you know, some whatever area, different States and just be link up with them, film a video with them. And then all of a sudden er- everyone knows about this 11 year old kid who's just, yeah. you know, super and good. Then, and then, you're just like, and then he's on this company and now he's exactly. Doing, and, and, and yeah. And he's, he's not doing that. Like in some sort of like no. selfish manner to try to like benefit. It seems like he just wants to help kids out. You I know think what I mean? he genuine, genuinely just likes to help people out, man. And just likes to see people grow and hundred percent. Yeah. And helps give them a start. Cause he's always had that platform, you know? Mm-hmm. No, he's a, he's like a legend, bro. He's like, just like a fucking, I feel like, you know, I feel like a lot of people know about him, but there's definitely, I feel like, a portion of skateboarding that doesn't, you know, probably know about him yet, but, they, like, he's been a part of this shit for so long and has been uh, friends and filmed with so many fucking people. It's insane. Nigel is pretty much YouTube. Like, he was the first vlogger. Really? Like, he was the first dude to make these commercials, like, these, like, $20 for 20 tricks. Oh, you wow. Know, like, these segments and... um He's been crushing YouTube for a long time. No way. Yeah, like he put a lot of skaters onto YouTube, and he's taught me a lot about it too. That's sick. Mm-hmm. Um, last question I want to ask you is, uh, I should ask you this before we were talking about your injury, but um, you had to leave the Battle of the Barracks 12 because of your injury. Yeah. Were you super, like, how did you feel about that shit, dude? I was so excited to be in the Battle of the Barracks. Um, you had just beat Kelly Hart, and too. And I was, yeah, I was doing good, and, and it was I was having a lot of fun. 
and like really came into it this year where like I had a plan and I was like um it was going it was going as planned man it was fun and then I got hurt and so that was unfortunate um but everything does happen for a reason I believe that you know Mm -hmm. it was meant to be and the person who won deserved it and uh I still got to go watch it you know I was on crutches or whatever but yeah at the end of the day, like it's all meant to be. And I think this time right now has allowed me to focus on some other things and learn a lot about some other things and now able to come back in, apply it. And then when I skate, able to apply even more and, and just be at it even a, a higher level. And exactly. Feel even better than how I was. No, yeah, 100%. Come back stronger, you know? Um, <clears throat> have you heard of a, uh, you know, Action Bronson? Yeah. Uh, I remember he said a long time ago. You did? No way. That's fucking fire. (laughs) I remember he said that he started his rap career because he broke his leg in the kitchen. He said he was like working in the kitchen, slipped on some oil and broke his leg. And he had to, you know, be bedridden for a couple months. And during that time, he just started recording, doing all this stuff. And it took off from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of noticed like a a similar thing with me, too, where I was skating the Brooklyn, you know, the Brooklyn Project's half pipe in the back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was skating that thing. Uh, I had just learned because like I, my whole life. Do you skate transition at all? Um, it's it's not it's kind of difficult for me, but I enjoy it. Mm. I can do a few things. Same thing here. <laughs> like I've I've skated street my whole life, and yeah. like a, a while ago, a couple when I was like I don't know. Actually, it was already been a, a minute. Like probably when I was like twenty two, twenty three, I was like destined i was like uh, i had like a goal in my mind where i was like i'm going to learn how to skate transition <laughs> and i was like going to only transition parks and yeah. i was skating half pipes and i was like on a, uh, on a mission trying to <laughs> fucking get this shit you know and then i finally learned how to do kickflip to fakies on a fucking transition That's which dope. is like a big deal for me mm-hmm. anyways one day i was skating bp ramp break my fucking ankle and uh, i just like sat on it really bad i broke Gosh, it and then uh yeah. ended up spending like six seven months at home and uh during that time i just had nothing to do and i just started watching hella hella youtube and uh i got super into um no jumper and like you know uh, joe rogan all this shit and like had i not broken my leg there i would have just continued you know what i mean like yeah. just skating and uh, working that same job or probably did that. something else it, like it, this kind of pushed me down that this path exactly. in a weird way you know what i mean because the of that uni- injury yeah the universe did something where you're like damn that sucked but then ultimately it all it, it shaped into and blossomed into something yeah yeah awesome you know Mm -hmm. um bro you know what's even funnier is when i when i was skating that ramp uh it was just me back there by myself and then uh they let in this one other kid uh back there and he had just like got into skateboarding and he like bought a fresh board or whatever and he was like i wanted to look at the ramp and uh i was telling him like yo skate it he's like oh no no he's like i'm just like learning like i'm just gonna watch or whatever Mm -hmm. i was like yo it's it's chill like and i was showing him a couple things i was like oh this rock's a fakie this is this i was like check this out i just learned this but and i I broke my my god (laughs) and this kid was just like (gasps) bro he was like i looked at his like first i i sat on my ankle and i was like that didn't seem right i turned over (laughs) looked at him and just the shock on his face i was like i fucked up i was like god damn it I called my mom. I was like, "Mom, because they lived Did up they the street." I was like, "Yo, can you drive me to the hospital?" And then she was just like, "God damn it, you!" I was like, "Bro, that, that was the kid's first impression." I you. know. That's where I was like, "Bro, I <laughs> fucked up his experience." <laughs> I was like, trying I'm, to be cool. Like, and oh, shit. I'm just gonna. Set, I'm just giving the board back. <laughs> I don't even want to sk- I'm just kidding. Can I return that's, this? That's a part of it, though, bro. And bro, it makes you stronger. You know? No, hundred percent. It's like, yeah, it's like a uh, every every try you don't land is like you learn a little little speck of information where you're like uh, closer to the uh, final goal exactly but um either way dude i want to thank you again and all your friends for pulling up i got something for you oh oh wait what before we uh take off man oh shit no way dude (gasps) no way (laughs) bro thank you man thank you Got some track pants. Track pants? Let's go. We are wolves. Thank you so much, dude. Bro. Look at the fucking lining and everything. This is so sick, dude. Thank you, man. And then right here, oh we, my we fucking are not God. a board company, but I would like to present you with this. I'm in my own skateboard just for the love. Dude, so, um, thank you so much, um, bro. So yeah, have that, man. That. Um, maybe hang that on your wall. That's one of my personals. Maybe don't skate that. I'll I was going to say, I was like, I feel like this is something um, I might want to yeah, hang. This my, uh, bro, thank you so much, team. man, dude. Bro, I appreciate you so much. Number one, for coming through, for being down to come through, because, you know, this is a small channel, dude. You know what I mean? It's like like, like we're not doing, like, crazy things over here. So I appreciate you uh, coming through, and I want to thank you for these gifts as well. It's funny because you don't even know how big, you don't even know how big the, like, how big 
the channel is or like what this is gonna grow to because like you're so humble you're like it's a small channel but bro you have no idea maybe you do of the impact you already have on so many people in a positive way thank you bro i appreciate so it's that just man gonna grow, bro. It's gonna be amazing. thank you man I, it's just that I, i've been crunching away on this youtube channel for seven years now, or like six seven years now it and takes. it's gone through so many different variations and takes, uh man. you know i'm just i'm glad for the point that we're at right now you know what i mean it's like I, at this point i don't want to fucking be hoping for crazy yeah, things man. anymore i just want to be happy with what, what we got here so exactly, bro. um thank you so much man and also you know what's funny is uh, i had uh, the homie reggie from corporate skateboards on and uh, he had hooked me up with the board too sick. with the sick graphic and he was like wanting me to skate it and oh, i was shit. like i was like yeah, i, I would love no, to but I, yeah i was like i don't want yeah. to so i'm glad you're telling me not to skate that one because i want to hang that yeah, one up i'll that get you sick. another one to skate but that's like uh, one of the prototypes like sample so dude that thing's fire yeah, what is the I just wanted to to the, get you man. i've never seen this like out like this black material oh, it's it looks matte. it's matte, matte black, bro yeah. that actually looks so and sick then, and then the gold foil under it like the camera won't be able to pick this up but it, it looks the transition between this matte black to the gold is so far it yeah, looks it's, really it's really fun, cool dude and then like in the sun there's different colors in there and stuff wow that's yeah, sick yeah, and that's cool you know like i said we are wolves it's cool because i get to learn how to do a lot of stuff and facts just make skateboards you know what I mean? make different things so it's all, 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 all types of different shit man i appreciate you uh rapping dude thank you no thank you man thank <laughs> you so much um but all right guys we're gonna wrap up this uh episode uh thank you guys so much for pulling up if you guys can go show some love to nick tucker Sh thank you so much nick tucker for coming through man i appreciate you so much for this and his homies man thank you guys hey. so much for pulling up as well Squad, um, we wolves, baby. all right guys uh we're gonna wrap this one up uh like comment subscribe and uh we're out.